Usually when someone asks me to create a build, I take it as a challenge. So when someone asks me what the worst build for roaming is, I had to create some parameters because obviously if we say the true worst build, then you can just say a build with no traits or just random stuff placed in. So you kind of need to set a minimum for it. So the minimum I set is viable archetype. And I basically decided that Fresh Air Weaver is the worst of the best or the best of the worst build for roaming. And the reason for that is, is because the role that it fills is sort of similar to a Mesmer or a Thief. It has that single target burst, but it doesn't have all the evasion and escape potential that those other classes have. While it does have a lot of things that you take, for example, projectile reflect, super speed, long range burst, it does have some good stuff. I mean, it's not a terrible build. It's just the worst of the viable builds. So it doesn't really fill its role as effectively as the other classes and it has a lot of kind of like weaknesses that prevent it from um, having good matchups so it's an elementalist so it is very squishy so thieves counter it very hard mesmers counter it very hard so not only does it not do the role of those other builds as well it also gets countered by those builds so you might as well just run them and also it has worse condi cleanse than those other builds and that's because usually you go with the arcane trait line however i came up with a weaver build that utilizes the water magic trait line and super speed with the woven stride trait to allow weaver to have some condi cleanse and sustain so that you're not just a one trick burst pony which is normally what most fresh air weavers are. So my idea kind of fits into the whole idea that I go with all of my roaming builds. You need to be able to survive outnumbered and you need to have some form of escape. So I feel like this is actually a decent version of the build and it is actually a lot of fun. So let's just go over the build. I go for the air magic, water magic, and weaver trait lines. In air, you'll be getting one with air, which gives you super speed when attuning to air. And that is very strong because it's three seconds. And as a weaver, you can dual attune. So say I am in water right now. I go to air attunement and I get super speed. Then my attunement cooldown is like four seconds so there's like one second of no super speed before i can get it again and then i at that point when you're dual attuned to air you'd have to swap to something else but because you have fresh air you can go back into air to get that super speed so you can pretty much have you know above like 60 to 70 percent super speed uptime if you really wanted to in situations where you're kiting or you need to escape so having that option for that much super speed is actually really good and makes you not quite as fast as a thief but definitely pretty fast and that allows you just the fact that you're moving so quickly to avoid a lot of attacks through movement and that's really important because fresh air ellie lacks the evades and the stealth that a mesmer or thief have to avoid a lot of attacks so what you need to do is you actually need to use your positioning with this build to avoid attacks rather than using skills so the skill cap or rather the skill requirement of this build is a lot higher because you have to have superior positioning to all those other classes and then you have electric discharge is a very important trait whenever you swap to air you will put a eight second eight stack of vulnerability on your target and that increases your damage by eight percent and it will also do a little bit of damage and it can crit so 
that's important for fresh air because if you swap into air and you crit like this, which I didn't, but if I did crit, then it would proc my air attunement again because of fresh air. So let's see if I can get that here. Um, so I swap into air, it crits, and then I can swap into air again. And because I can dual attune with fresh air, which basically reduces the recharge of your air attunement whenever you crit, if you're not in air attunement, or you're not double attuned to air, then you can basically go straight into air. And that is really good for doing a lot of combos. So whenever you are in an air attunement, you will gain ferocity and you will also gain ferocity whenever you swap into air uh, shortly after for five seconds, which is 250. So you've got a lot of ferocity when swapping into air. If you look right here at my crit uh, chance, I'm at 219 and then I will swap to air and it goes up to 257. So that's, so that's like a 40% damage increase just from the fresh air air swap. So a lot of your skills, you're gonna be comboing with the air attunement swap to make them deal a lot more damage. And then on top of that, you have electric discharge and you can do a double air attunement, which means you'll get a 16 stack of Volm sometimes, though you're really not double attuning to air too often. You can do it in some situations that you're looking to finish off people and get that big burst. So Raging Storm also gives you Fury whenever you crit and will give you Ferocity whenever you crit. So that's very important because that's a lot of damage and having Fury uptime is super important because you want to be critting to proc your fresh air and just doing damage. Then we have Water Attunement. So a lot of the stuff in Water Attunement actually gives you damage. So we have Piercing Shards which gives you 5% more damage to vulnerable targets and you have a lot of vulnerability from air attunement swap and your vuln lasts 33% longer so that's pretty good then you have healing ripple that gives you a little bit of healing when you swap to water you have flow like water which heals you a little bit when you evade on a 10 second ICD so it's like maybe 50 healing per second not amazing but it gives you a damage increase when you're above 75% health so a little bit more damage modifiers. And Aquaman's training isn't amazing. Um, it just lowers the cooldown of your water skills. Cleansing water though. This is the main reason why we go into water uh, trait line. So whenever you gain regeneration, you're going to cleanse a condition from yourself. And we're gonna talk about this later, but you're gonna gain a lot of regeneration on this build, which is gonna give you a lot of sustain and it's gonna give you a lot of Condi Cleanse to allow you to not only be aggressive, but also to survive. So in Weaver, you gain the ability to dual uh, attune, obviously, and you have superior elements, which is whenever you use a dual attack, which is your three skill, whenever you have two different attunements attuned. So if I'm fire air right now, I get the plasma beam, you know, fire earth i get the fracturing strike so your three skills whenever you're not dual attuned right so dust devil doesn't count you will weaken the target and you will gain a 15 percent crit chance increase to weakened foes so this is kind of just good for increasing your damage during your burst because dual attacks will usually be part of your burst and Weakness is also good for peeling for yourself. If you are taking pressure from someone who's a power class, weakness is very good. So you also gain barrier whenever you use a dual attack and you'll gain swiftness whenever you use a dual attack. And whenever you have swiftness, you'll deal 10% more damage. So it's important to be using your dual attacks and having swiftness to increase your damage. But this is also important for woven stride. So Woven Stride gives you swiftness whenever you're inflicted with inhibiting conditions on a five second internal cooldown, but also whenever you gain super speed or swiftness, you will gain regeneration. 
and then swiftness has increased effectiveness which means that basically swiftness gives you 40 percent movement speed instead of 33 but you have a lot of super speed anyways which is better than that so this is basically the idea of the build you have tons of swiftness generation right because whenever you dual attack you will gain swiftness whenever you um, use your air attunement with the glyph of elemental harmony you'll get swiftness you also will get super speed a lot on this build so super speed and swiftness give you regen right and you'll get super speed from one with air which you can get a lot you'll get super speed from twist of fate and all of those swiftness or super speed applications gives you tons of regeneration which is 500 healing each time you stack it up so you've pretty much got permanent regen and that gives you a lot of sustain which fresh air ellie lacks and the condi cleanse that it gives you is pretty insane too so it's not only good because it gives you a lot of condi cleanse but it's just kind of like part of your rotation to give yourself condi cleanse you don't have to go out of your way to get it so doing dual attacks gives you swiftness which gives you condi cleanse and going into air attunement gives you swiftness or super speed which gives you regen and then condi cleanse so just doing your rotation is going to give you that condi cleanse which means if you've got like blind or weakness on you you can often play very aggressively and you're not getting countered by those condies so you have a lot of ways to survive but also to be aggressive on classes like thieves that are going to blind and weaken you a lot or even to just while you're kiting someone you're often going to want to have a lot of your super speed up time right so getting that super speed is always it's also going to help you survive so it just kind of works out very conveniently for the flow of the build you don't really have to think um okay now i need to survive or okay now i need to do damage it's kind of just all flowing together and it makes it a lot of fun in my opinion so yeah those are pretty much the traits um most of the complexity of weaver comes from the skills themselves though so we'll get into that and there's quite a lot to learn but first we'll go over the equipment so the equipment is very important because i'm running full marauders and then i have zerker weapons so everything else is marauder and then zerker weapons and i have pack runes pack runes are super important because not only do they give you a lot of precision and power which are two of the most important stats for you they'll give you the fury uptime that you need for your raging storm trait so raging storm it seems like it's a pretty good trait but by itself it's actually kind of bad and the reason for that is it gives you your fury whenever you crit right and then it gives you the ferocity buff while you have fury so every three seconds you'll proc two seconds of fury so that means whenever you are proccing that trait you will not have fury because it, it doesn't last long enough to last the entire internal cooldown so it's always going to be harder to proc this trait because you're going to have less crit chance while you're trying to proc it and then because it's harder to proc you're going to have less uptime on it so it's actually not even like a you know a 66 percent uptime it's even it's less than that right because you're not always hitting and you're not always critting especially when you don't have fury so having fury generation outside of this trait is going to not only give you the ferocity buff more often so it's going to give you you know more reliable damage but it's also going to make sure that it's easier to keep up your fury so it's sort of like self synergy there with the uh with the pack runes because the more fury you have the more you'll get and you want to have that high up time on fury because everything you want is critting right with the uh, fresh air procs the tons of ferocity you have and 
pack rune will basically just give you um, like an eight second fury of time when you enter into a fight or go into combat. So it gives you the fury up front, which is super important because then it helps you to start flowing the procs as soon as possible and you have it immediately when you need it. And then it gives you a little bit of boon duration, which helps you to keep up your regeneration, your fury, and your swiftness uptime, right? Because swiftness gives you damage, if you remember. Fury gives you damage, and regeneration gives you sustain. So it's just pretty much the best rune. You can go for the evasion rune, on the other hand, though, if you want. Um, say, like, if you have other sources of fury, um, from like party members say maybe you're roaming with the revenant and they're gonna be giving you the facet fury always you can go for uh, the rune of evasion and rune of evasion gives you a lot of ferocity which is nice because you want ferocity but it also gives you swiftness for six seconds after evading an attack and as we know swiftness gives you condi cleanse so it's actually giving you more condi cleanse every time you evade and yeah, it just gives you so much Connie Cleanse. But instead of Rune of Evasion, I opted for the Cleansing Sigil because it ends up doing more damage for you to not have another Sigil and for you to have Pack Runes because the Fury Uptime is so much more effective that way. And it makes the build flow a little bit better as well. So I take Cleansing Sigil and Energy Sigil. Those are very passive, very defensive Sigils but I feel like it's very important on the Fresh Air Weaver because, as I said, you're low on evasion of time, so Energy Sigil gives you a lot of that value of lacking those evades and gives you them more. And then Cleansing is like, because the cleanse that you have from the Woven Stride Cleansing Water Synergy is nice, but it's kind of like one at a time. So you kind of have like a nuke Condi Cleanse from the Cleanse uh, Sigil, and then you also have the Granular Condi Cleanse from the Woven Stride Synergy. So that's why I like that. And yeah, that's pretty much the equipment. That's It's pretty standard, just full Marauders. If you do want, you can go for a little bit more Ferocity by going for uh, some Valkyrie pieces, but that will you know, lower your crit chance. So the food that I go for is the peppercorn crusted sous vide steaks. And this will just give you basically the ferocity and power buffs that you get from the sweet and spicy butternut squash soup. But it also gives you the damage reduction. And the damage reduction is super important on Fresh Air Ellie because it's kind of like the one thing that the build doesn't have. You know, it doesn't have that much evasion, right? So we get the energy sigil. Doesn't have that much uh, Condi cleanse, so we get the woven stride plus cleansing sigil, right? And then it doesn't have much reduction on damage, right? You're an Ellie. I don't go for any toughness. You don't have protection because you're not going into arcane. So the incoming damage is super important. So I'd either take the peppercorn crusted sous vide steak if you really want to spend the money for it or the reason why i don't use sweet and spicy butternut squash soup instead is because i feel like the damage reduction is more important than the power and ferocity if you don't want to spend that much i would go for the oyster uh, fried oyster sandwiches those will give you power and damage reduction instead of ferocity so you can go for either of those two so the hardest part about learning weaver is the skills and i'm not going to go over every single skill because there are so many that you can't just look at them yourself but i will talk about combos that i use and the situations that i use those combos in and what the skills are and one thing to note as well is that weaver dual attack skills are all like 15 second cooldowns and what that means is you know like 18 15 that basically you want to fit 
as many different skills into that window of time as possible. And then you can kind of like rerun that combo over again in like 20 seconds. So yeah, we, Fresh Air Weaver is a very burst oriented build. And here are some of the combos that you will want to do. So first of all, dual attacks do not require you to have a specific ordering of your attunements. They just need the combination. So if I'm in fire air, that's the same as air fire for my three skill, right? All of your dual attacks are your three skill when you are in two different attunements. And you're not gonna see um, like Phoenix that often, even though that's a pretty good skill because you have to dual attune. And one thing about non uh, arcane builds is that dual attuning into anything that isn't air attunement takes quite a while to do. So it's not really, it's kind of out of the way. So yeah, any kind of like dual attune where it's not including air, I generally like to precast that as like I'm kiting into something and then go into like a massive like air burst. So that's kind of how the idea works. But the first combo I'm gonna show is like your general DPS insta burst kind of combo. It does the most damage in the shortest amount of time. So you're generally gonna be in air and then you swap into earth. So you're gonna be in earth air and then um, you use your rock barrier and this is a really good skill because it gives you 250 toughness and you're really squishy so that that buff is going to give you a little bit of sustain but when you use it you're going to hurl those rocks that were protecting you one by one at the target and there's no animation on that cast so you can do it at any time and usually yeah you're using it at the beginning of this combo so that by the time you're through the whole combo all of those rocks will hit and it'll do a lot of damage over time and then what you'll do is use earthen synergy and that is a nice like stun from range that also does damage so it kind of like bypasses the stuns doing no damage balance and so you'll you'll do rock barrier and earthen synergy at the same time so you'll stun and do quite you'll, you'll start doing quite a bit of damage then you'll swap to fire attunement fracturing strike and that will give vuln and burn to your target none of these skills that i've just used require you to be looking at the target by the way so far so you can kind of do this while in like the middle of a kite and this will give vulnerability six to your target and it does like a, a double animation. So when you start casting it, it hits. And then when you finish casting it, it hits again. So it's like two attacks. And then from there, you're gonna go earth attunement because you will be critting this whole time and that'll re, uh, recharge your air attunement. So while fracturing strike is hitting, you swap to air and then you plasma beam and then your air will come off cooldown again because you're critting. So you'll plasma beam into another, so you're gonna dual attune air and then you're gonna lightning strike. And that's gonna put like 22-ish Vuln on the target during your plasma beam if you do it fast enough. And remember, you can attunement swap during a skill so long as you start casting the skill before you attunement swap. So you gotta get a little bit of practice and get the fluidity up, but it'll look like something like this. And then, yeah, so I didn't really do 100% of the mobs HP, but you know, it's close to a one shot and that's a very quick combo. So that's the main combo you use, but obviously you're gonna want to do multiple methods of bursting your target. Otherwise you are predictable, right? So after you landed your full burst, you're probably gonna be in double air attunement Maybe you're gonna be spamming air auto on the target. By the way, air auto is a really strong attack that you can use to track stealth targets because when they go in stealth, you'll keep channeling on the target. And you'll if you don't touch any of your controls, your character will face the direction that 
the target is moving so it'll basically show you where they're moving and you'll see the beam as well go directly to where the person is so you can gain a lot of information on stealth targets that way and figure out whether they're being aggressive on you or they're running away and you can make a lot of decisions based on that so the air auto is very good and so another burst that you can do you know you've probably got your cooldowns coming up soon so you're kiting right you maybe go into water because that's the only attunement you haven't used yet and you'll use shatterstone shatterstone is a very heavy hitting ability and it's a very very small aoe but it, it's kind of quick how it occurs so what you can do is you can put it like on the target but put it like on the edge of them and put the rest of it where you think they're headed so if they don't move then they'll get hit but if they do move in the direction that you think they're moving they they'll still get hit so yeah you can just spam shatterstone it's a two second cooldown so it's really good versus uh like large groups because you can get massive aoe damage on low cooldown whereas most of this build doesn't really have AOE damage on it. It's very single target oriented. So you can just be kiting with uh, the air and water. And then what you'll do after you know kiting a little bit, getting some regen, you'll go back into air. And then what you'll do is, you'll probably lightning strike here and there. You'll, so you have freezing gust. That will do a chill to the target. You need to be facing them, but it's a nice range chill. And then you have comet which doesn't require you to be facing the target or line of sight. So it'll just come from the sky and hit them. And that's a two second daze that does a decent amount of damage. And that's just really good for baiting out cooldowns and stuff because when someone's dazed, the only thing they can really do is stun break, skills with no cast times, or basically just dodge. So a lot of times when people are dazed, they'll just dodge. And especially when they're chilled and dazed, right? So when you're chilled, you want to like dodge for movement because you're moving so slow. And then when you're dazed, like it's the only thing you can do is dodge. So you're kind of like baiting out dodges uh, with this burst combo. So it's a little bit less direct than the first one. So you bait out with Shatterstone and Freezing Gust and Comet. And then what you'll do is you'll cast Glacial Drift. And this is a slow moving projectile and it'll give you stability as well. You gotta be facing the target to cast it. It does a decent amount of damage, but what you wanna do is while it's moving towards the target, you wanna swap to fire, and then that'll put air on your second attunement, and you wanna gale the target as the glacial drift is headed towards them, and the glacial drift will chill them again. You'll knock them down with the gale, which is a four second knockdown, the longest single target range knockdown in the game and it's unblockable so it's really strong and they're knocked down for four seconds which gives you enough time to land dragon's tooth so dragon's tooth is a very long animation but it comes down after a while and it does 2000 base damage that's insane but if they don't stun break your gale then they're they're knocked down long enough for that to hit and then after you cast your dragon's tooth you'll use plasma beam and then use your you know your double air attunement into lightning strike again so that's like a more um a, or rather a less direct kind of burst combo that relies on you baiting out cooldowns and then once stun breaks or dodges are out of the way you can just go in for a huge gale burst and then once you've got like a target down this build doesn't really have that much aoe in it right you do have the fire greatsword and that's good but you don't always have it and you have many ways to get a single target down but there is a decent way to cleave the down once you do get it so after you've done your burst right you're going to be in air air usually right and you're going to be auto attacking the target with air you can go for a stomp with blinding flash right because blinding flash is a no animation uh blind so you can do that while stomping 
or if it's too dangerous for you to go for the stomp, right? Because you're a squishy Ellie, you don't have misform to stomp. You can go for um, this burst combo. So you're going to be in air usually at this point, and then you'll go fire. So you can do dragon's tooth again, and you can just put that on down body, which is it's going to hit because they're not moving anywhere unless they're maybe like a thief or an Ellie or a mesmer. And you can just cast Dragon's Tooth while you're running away from the down body. And also, there's going to be like lots of counter pressure on you if like their allies are nearby. So it's nice that you're in air because you can put Swirling Winds down after you cast Dragon's Tooth. Because first of all, down state bodies usually have projectiles that can CC you and stuff like that. So putting Swirling Wind down on a down state body is very good. But yeah, you're cleaving with Dragon's Tooth and then you swap to water so here's where the burst begins you're spamming shatterstone on the downstate body which is is good because uh, that's another kind of like skill that's better on you know immobile targets and then what you do is you're in water fire so you'll use shatterstone and then fiery frost which is like an evade backwards away from the target that doesn't require you to be facing them it'll kind of already make you face it it'll do a decent amount of damage it will give chill and burning and you can from that point use flame wall which will put an aoe on the ground as well this is all very like stationary skills that i'm using here and give yourself some might with fire shield which also has a decent amount of damage on the transmute effect so as you can see there that didn't even crit but it can crit for quite a bit and it'll give you five might so generally you just do two three four and then five and then you'll do two again at that point and then what you'll do is you'll go into earth and earth will give you stone tide which is a it's another ground aoe which you can put and it'll deal a lot of damage over time like that and then from here, you can do Comet, which will daze around the down body. So you can get some CC and prevent people from rezzing like that. And then you can cast Rock Barrier and then go into your Earthen Synergy and then finish off by going back into air. So I'll show that full thing again. So you go Fire, Swirling, then you go into Air, or sorry, Water. You spam 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 2. And then you go into earth, use three, five, two, and then two, swap air, earth and synergy, and then just spam your air. So it's a little bit of a longer combo, but that's kind of how you deal with downstate bodies is you kind of have to bait them over time and kind of have long sustained cleave. So yeah, that's kind of a nice little combo that I like to use and yeah, I'm just showing you it one more time. So yeah, that is the so that is the like uh, fire, water, earth, and then air combo. So it uses all the elements. Then we'll go over the other two combos again. So you have the earth into fire into air combo, which is this one. So you'll do this into that into that. And then there was the air, water, fire combo. So you start in water and you're usually kiting with Shatterstone, then you go air. So you start in air and you are kind of like kiting with Comet and stuff like that. Then you use Glacial Drift, Lightning Strike whenever. So Glacial Drift into fire, into gale, into Dragon's Tooth, Plasma Beam, and then double air, and then Lightning Strike again. So yeah, those are the three combos. You have the air, water, fire. Then there's the earth, fire, air. And then there's the water, fire, earth, air one. So those are the three combos that I show you guys. But there are definitely many more combos that you can use and figure out for yourself. But for the sake of showing off the abilities and for time's sake, yeah, that's what we're going to go with. So. On top of that, you have your heal skill, Glyph of Elemental Harmony. It's just a very low investment heal, one second cast time for a 6,000 heal. 
and he can give you swiftness which gives you damage it gives you cleanse because of woven stride and then you have twist of fate so twist of fate gives super speed and is a dodge stun break so it'll give you a Kondi cleanse because it's super speed with woven stride and it also has a very very long recharge 75 seconds but it is a count recharge which means that while your first um, twist of fate is on cooldown and you're ready to use the second one the first one is still coming off cooldown so you're kind of like getting value off the fact that it is a count recharge because say you use twist of fate early on in the fight you do have your second twist of fate off cooldown and you can use it whenever but you're still getting value off of the fact that the first twist of fate is coming off cooldown whereas if i use another skill like arcane shield um if i don't use the skill i'm not getting value off of the skill coming off cooldown again so while it does have a long cooldown it's not as long as you think because you're constantly getting the cooldown off over time whereas if you're saving the cooldown of arcane shield well then it's artificially lengthening the cooldown because you're not using it off cooldown so that's another thing and and the fact that you can just have it whenever you want right the the twist of fate and if you decide yeah i do want to use my second charge um then yeah you can use it and yeah you'll get punished for not having a, a second stun break for 75 seconds but that's why I put a second stun break in the build with Arcane Shield. And Arcane Shield is comparable to Misform, but I like Arcane Shield better than Misform because Misform basically stuns you. And Arcane Shield allows you to be aggressive, right? Because it's a stun break and a block, which allows you to, you know, attack, right? So it's a really good um, for like the role of just being aggressive and yeah i i just need a second stun break because if i'm using every stun break as twist of fate well you're gonna run out very often so yeah you use arcane shield for sure or misform if you really want that um if you want to be a little bit more defensive or signet of air if you don't really care about um having any effect really on your stun break i mean it does blind but and and vuln which is good but um yeah, it's not something like Arcane Shield where it'll peel you pretty hard, but it is really low cooldown. So Signet of Air with Twist of Fate is kind of nice because you can just spam your uh, Signet of Air for Stun Break whenever, but I feel like it's kind of low impact. So I like Arcane Shield better, and you do have Lightning Flash, obviously, because you want that 900 range port because... It's just so good for playmaking, escaping. It's versatile. You love to see it, right, on every single Ellie build. And then finally, you have Fiery Greatsword. So Fiery Greatsword is probably the strongest elite that Elementalists have. And yeah, Tornado's good. Yeah, Weave Self is good. But the only reason why Fiery Greatsword isn't used as much is because it has a very long cooldown. But I don't think that it should be buffed. I think that Fire Greatsword is so high impact that it needs to it needs to be that long of a cooldown. So when you summon Fire Greatsword, you'll do damage to the area. And then you'll give yourself a power and condition damage buff. So you have more power, and then you change your skill bar. So your first skill is this kind of like AoE-ish like wave in front of you does a lot of damage the two is like a condi spell the three though is insane damage against walls the four is insane damage leap and the five is a really big aoe on the air, uh, area and before your fiery greatsword uh, runs out you want to drop it and pick up the second one because the fiery greatsword only lasts so long and both of them disappear at the same time if you only use one if you drop the first one and you pick up the second one the first one will still time out but the second one the timer for it to time out starts as soon as you pick it up so the later you wait to pick up the second one the more you have fiery greatsword and that allows you as you can see 
I had Fiery Greatsword up for a whole minute, almost. So that's, you know, one-third uptime on Fiery Greatsword if you really wanted to uh, min-max that. And yeah, it's just a really strong skill because all the skills do so much damage. It's also a really good escape in some situations because it gives you more mobility. And yeah, the three skill, if I could show you it again, uh, it's really strong for dealing damage with bursts. Like you can use it against a wall or while immobilized and you hit multiple times. And because you're kind of like staying in place because you're up against a wall or immobilized, you're hitting the target in an unintended manner because you're kind of supposed to like whirl through them and only hit them a couple times but if you hit them with every hit then yeah it does a ton of damage and you can also use lightning flash to kind of manipulate that to happen in a non-wall or a non-immobilized situation as well like you whirl through them and then use lightning flash to like go back where you came from and then whirl through them again but yeah fire gate sword really good and it gives you a lot of down cleave which is important for the build because you can burst people down and then pull out your fiery greatsword and then put the five down on the down body and then you can like use the four and then three and it does a lot of damage and while you are in the fiery greatsword you can be swapping attunements and either cleansing yourself by going into air or giving yourself damage modifiers or going into you know, like water so yeah you basically want to just go into water and air right because you don't gain any bonuses from going earth you don't gain any bonuses from going in fire so you just swap between air and water while you're in the fiery greatsword and yeah those will give you either sustain or damage based on which one you do and you can always double attune to air when you uh, do that because it doesn't matter which skills you have because you have the fiery greatsword skills so fresh air ellie is normally known for being weak against conditions but with this build i'll be taking this 1v1 with a condi dragon hunter pretty handedly because all you have to do is use the earth focus 4 which will cleanse three conditions so all you do is just go into earth and then you just need to crit and then go to air and that'll put your earth skills on your four and five and then just swapping attunements will proc your cleansing and your air attunement will proc even more uh, cleansing. So dealing with conditions on this build doesn't feel as bad. I've dueled Condi Thieves before and they're just free kills because they don't have enough sustained damage to go through my healing. And yeah, it's just very good for outnumbered situations in Worldly World where there's a lot of Condis. So in this 1v2, I'm versus a, more like a power dragon hunter and a Condi Mesmer. Now, Condition Mesmer is probably the hardest counter to Fresh Air Ellie because the confusion and you doing a lot of skills in succession doesn't seem to work out very well. But I kite with Fiery Greatsword and land a huge burst getting the dragon hunter down. Now at this point, I'm trying to cleave with the Fiery Greatsword. I dodge a MOA, and then I position myself to land my Plasma Beam to pierce the down body and to hit the Mesmer and cleave both at the same time. Then I get a nice stomp off after the Guardian has used their CC. So yeah, the Plasma Beam and the Air Auto Attack will pierce and hit all the targets in between you and your target. So that was an important positioning to create there to get as much damage as I possibly could. And now in this 1v1, I'm going to try to avoid the shatters there with my obsidian flesh, which makes me invulnerable. And as soon as I see the shatters or the clones coming towards me, I can dodge them and avoid most of the Mesmer's condition burst from the clones. So that allows me to survive long enough to pressure the Mesmer, and now they're starting to run away. So I blink it with a gale into a plasma beam burst, and they distort, but all I need to do is air auto attack. And as you can see here, I'm following the body of the Mesmer with the 
air auto attack and I see that they stop moving so I know that I've downed them and at that point I've got the kill so yeah it's important to know how to deal with those outnumbered situations kite and then look for the burst and then go in speaking of which this is going to be a heavily outnumbered situation versus some thieves and thieves are one of the harder counters to Ellie's as well so I'm going to try to keep my distance and pressure this dead eye from range and then I immediately see that another thief has jumped on me so I use obsidian flesh to invulnerable and then I go to a terrain spot that they can't port to and put up swirling winds so they can't shoot me from there but I can shoot them so that allows me to get the kill on the dead eye because I can't be bursted while the swirling winds is up but I can burst from range so using terrain is very important for making this build survive these very unfavorable matchups because you have the ability right to do the terrain faster than them because you have super speed whereas they have ports and evades which either don't work on terrain or will actually make them fall off the terrain so that's why I say that Ellie is actually a pretty difficult class to play because you have to know how to use your positioning very well and here I just one shot this dragon hunter and then two others come in to try to stop me my fire greatsword comes off cooldown immediately as the down happens so I am having no reluctance to use that cooldown there and then at this point it's now a 1v2 I go in for a little bit of a whirl burst and at this point I realize that the yeah the other players don't really have that much damage to pressure me so I just go very aggressive in this 1v2 and yeah I, I get so much damage off with the fire grade so I just it's just so insane the amount of pressure you can do and then I at this point I need to just gale and yeah I get the plasma burst on the necromancer so not a very impressive 1v3 but it's still there because fire greatsword it has so much power creep in it so yeah that's pretty much the build while it is the worst roaming build that you can play it is still a pretty good build and a fun build to play so I actually recommend this build for you know any Ellie's that like to roam or if you're like a thief player and you just want something new it's actually a pretty fun class to play too you know it's not the best build but it's definitely not the worst of the worst you know it's the the worst of the best <laughs>